Halloween is upon us and you know what that means. A slew of unnecessary, poorly made Halloween movies in order to cash in on the Halloween season. And me and my wife love Halloween. I would say Halloween is definitely our favorite holiday. It's really an excuse for people and more importantly myself to kind of, you know, be myself without dealing with people bullying me or calling me names. Like why can't I walk around the street in a Bob Builder costume door to door and ask for candy? every day. Why does it have to only be on one day a year? That's not fair. Let me do that. Let me be Bob the Builder. But one fascinating fact about me, because I know that's that's what you really care about, is I don't like horror movies necessarily. Well, I guess you could say I don't really like cheap horror movies, the, the jump scare, the gore, the, the, the sex. I feel like I enjoy the more whimsical, unsettling nature of uh, horror movies rather than the kind of cheaper stuff. Jordan Peele's kind of a good example of a director of movies that I enjoy, you know, that are scary. Basically, it's a long form way of saying, I'm a bitch, I get scared, okay? I said it, okay? And again, Wendell and Wilde is coming out from Jordan Peele, which I'm super excited about. I don't even know if uh, that review has came out yet, but I'm, I'm making a review on that probably right now. But today I wanna talk about neither of those things, all right? I wanna talk about something important. I wanna talk about a movie that kind of came and went like a dry fart. See, obviously I talk about stop motion claymation movies all the time, but where there is that masterful art of animation, we also have the emulators, the people who try to recreate that vibe with animation. And I would say 99% of the time, it turns out like absolute garbage. And Igor is definitely one of those movies based around a cliche, which I, I honestly don't know if you could call it a cliche because it's just based on uh, Igor from uh, you know, Frankenstein. So they kind of took, you know, Igor from Frankenstein and just made an entire movie uh, about that. I mean, I would understand if it just had to do with minions in a way. I don't know, maybe they should make a movie that kind of focuses on like evil minions rather than just Igor specifically. I don't know. I, I think that would be way better concept than just doing Igors. But alas, I don't think anyone's ever gonna think of something like that. But this movie was released back in 2008. And honestly, I remember seeing this advertised consistently during the Halloween season. I don't know about you guys, but you probably have seen the ads and the trailers and etc. But a lot of you probably haven't seen the movie itself. I mean, I don't know, maybe you did. Maybe I was just the one that was left out and everybody's seen it. This movie was directed by none other than the legendary Tony Leondis, who has directed some of the greatest movies of our generation. I'm talking about Lilo and Stitch 2. The, oh, the sequel. Well, okay, well, at least he directed Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda Secrets of the Masters? The hell is that, a, a, a short? Who the fuck watches shorts? Oh yeah, and the Emoji Movie. He directed the Emoji Movie. Oh God, it all makes sense now. So this movie is just a giant mess from the plot to the animation to the voice acting. It's all a mess. The whole, I guess, message of this movie is kind of about the discrimination and how you shouldn't discriminate and discrimination is bad. And it's really, really on the nose where sometimes it just feels weird. He never looks at me that way. Maybe some men like girls who don't look like they've been put together at the junkyard. What you so the main concept of the movie, obviously, is just, you know, the, the idea that Igors, what if we took the, the, the enslaved Igor and then made him the scientist? Oh, 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 oh. I wonder if everyone in the writer's room just did a round of applause whenever someone came up with that insane idea. So basically every evil scientist in this movie has an Igor and no, they aren't named anything different. Every single one of them has a hump. Every single one of them is named Igor. Igor. So we follow Igor along with his two inventions, um, a rabbit who is immortal, who is voiced by Steve Buscemi, which honestly, the rabbit in this movie is the only comedic character throughout, or at least the only character that sometimes you know, maybe you get you get a little chuckle from him, but that's about it. Because his whole shtick is, you know, he's immortal, but he doesn't want to live, so he constantly tries to kill himself, which uh, is kind of fucked up. But then we have Brain or Brian who is a robot who's just stupid to be stupid. Uh, that's kind of his whole 
bit. Like, oh, what if we put a brain in inside a robot, but that brain was actually stupid. See what I'm talking about with this writing? There has to have been rounds of clauses everywhere. Now, honestly, the concept, regardless of how stupid it is, could have worked. You know, there's a possibility that it, it could have came together well, but the setting of the movie, just like Grandpappy's penis, doesn't work. So how this movie is set up is we live in a world, or I, I guess a town, they don't really talk about the world much, but they live in a nice farming town. And then one day, all of a sudden, a bunch of storm clouds just kind of appeared and killed all their crops, and boom, everybody's poor. And the solution to this situation of the fact that they can't farm anymore. In order to make money, the king came up with the idea to um, make evil inventions. Your crops die, you, you run out of ideas to to make money, so your, your idea is evil inventions. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Evil inventions, so the world pays them to not unleash the evil inventions. A simple business model change would work, you know, instead of farming, maybe do indoor farming, or I don't know, maybe sell cattle. Like, there's a lot of options here, you know? I mean, if they have all these evil inventions, why not just have one of them create an invention that will make them money? Like, I don't get this part. Or hell, better yet, they could have made an invention that could have made the writers make a better plot. <laughs> Oh God. So yeah, let's talk about the animation a little bit. At times it's not bad, but other times it's just, um, how do I say this without sounding mean? Not good. It's not good. I don't really know how to explain it. Like, at some points it almost makes my eyes water. And no, that's not from emotion. I don't have those. I would compare it to another movie that has a similar style, Jack and the Poo Poo Clock Heart. Uh, that's a weird one. A lot of people have actually asked me to do that movie. That one has weird animation too. But this is kind of what I'm talking about. It, it, it's almost like they're emulating the claymation style. There's also another show that has a similar style called Code Lyoko. I don't know if any of you remember that show when you were younger, or as I like to refer to it as uh, the show where everyone's head is the size of a watermelon. Also, another annoying thing about the beginning of this movie is how Igor narrates the beginning, tells us about how these storm clouds just appeared out of nowhere, and then we just cut to a giant tower that's shooting lasers into the sky. You expect me to not figure that out? You expect me to not figure out that, that, that that's producing the clouds? That's like, let me guess, it's gonna be a big twist at the end of the movie. Is that what the big twist is? Yes, that's what the big twist is. I'm sorry if I ruined it for you guys. Hello everyone, once again, it is me, Lord Pig, or now known as also Lord Piggy. Now let me tell you a beautiful tale of preservation. Preservation of the natural woodlands of Scotland, while also helping the reforestation efforts. Established titles plants a tree with every order and works with the global charities One Tree Planted and trees for the future to support global reforestation efforts. Now of course we all know I'm speaking of established titles. Established titles is a project based on Scotland tradition, where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. And you yourself can have yourself a unique plot of land next to yours truly. You can get yourself at least one square foot of land, and if that adds up together, we can create our own kingdom. The kingdom of the pig. This is so official you could even put it on your credit card, maybe put it on a plane ticket. If you want to be extra regal, you could even put it on your dating profile. And also, as the holidays are upon us, it serves as a fantastic gift. The first 200 people that click my link can be right next to Lord Piggy and Lady Piggy again creating our kingdom. Established Titles is actually running a Black Friday deal currently, so if you click that link in the description, you get an extra 10% off of the Black Friday deal. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash Bionic Pig and get yourself a, a piece of land and, and plant a tree and whatnot become a lord. So the main character, Igor, uh, is played by John Cusack, which is an interesting choice, I'll admit. But Igor talks about how, uh, you know, evil scientists come from all around the world to be a part of this big science fair that they hold in order to crown a winner for the evil contest. And I guess the winner wins a hundred billion dollars. No, that's not an exaggeration. Literally a hundred billion dollars. But at the bottom of the heap are obviously Igors. Uh, and the, the Igors are just 
It's basically just slavery. If you're born with a hump on your back, then you're destined to become a slave uh, in the scientist's world, which again, I don't know if that's the case for the entire world because this is collectively placed in the town. Like, wouldn't Igor's just be able to just go to a different town and then not be a slave because obviously they don't get paid money. The entire world is normal. The whole world is free and normal. It's just that town that enslaves Igors. I, I don't get it. Oh yeah, just to clear things up, uh, I think I mentioned this earlier, but every Igor's name is Igor. So obviously when I'm saying Igor, I'm referring to the Igor. So when I talk about Igor, I'm talking about Igor, who is an Igor. You'll get it. You'll get it. So the huge plot of this movie is Igor never wanted to be Igor. He wanted to be a scientist. So he's been working on projects in secret because, you know, it's illegal for uh, Igor to make inventions. Also, another dumb thing is that they have to talk with a lisp. And if they don't talk with a lisp, they get punished because none of them actually have a lisp. They just are doing it to be an Igor because that's what the original Frankenstein movie did. He lisped. It's stupid. Oh, yeah. Also, um, a fun little fact here. Uh, you know, I talked about how Igor should be able to just leave. If they're caught inventing something, they get slaughtered. No, I'm not talking about uh, like they just get a little stab and they're dead. I mean, obviously, they're going to get killed. They get slaughtered. They get taken to an Igor recycling plant, which is just hell. Or as I like to call it, Ohio. So after Igor introduces the movie and stuff like that, we have the very on the nose moment of, man, I wish I had my shot. If only I could invent something, then Igor's would be looked at differently. I wonder if that's what the movie's about. Then we get an introduction to Dr. Schadenfreude, who is uh, the number one scientist in these fairs. He's won 16 consistently, and he wears clothes like Elton John. And his girlfriend Jackson, who instead of having boobs, has horns, like, what? They even have jiggle physics. Like, what? Why? Why? Then we have the king who kind of just looks like a snail with legs. And I would also compare him to the mayor in Nightmare Before Christmas in a way. But yeah, the king proceeds to just bully the shit out of schadenfreude because uh, his family used to make pickles, which is a weird thing to bully him for. Because, I mean, pickles are kind of dope. But instead of us figuring out that they don't like each other, you know, just by that alone, uh, we get uh, a bunch of exposition and dialogue explaining the fact that they don't like each other because we go to schadenfreude man i'm so tired of the king i want to be king i i want to make an invention and 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 then take the throne and then we go to the king then man i hate schadenfreude we need someone to beat him so he doesn't become king we don't we don't need to we 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 could figure that out oh yeah also we have a really weird awkward moment where uh schadenfreude and his girlfriend jacqueline uh, almost get in a fight. He actually raises his hand, threatening to hit Jacqueline. And instead, they both start just hitting the Igor and then get horny. They, they, smack, an e they, they smack their Igor around and they get horny. That's just, ooh, I don't like how that sounds. And then they just start like baby talking each other and getting close and man, kind of getting excited right now. Damn. But yeah, Schadenfreude wants to be king, so uh, he's going to try to win the next science fair and then take the throne. And uh, and there's not really a reason why it's this fair specifically. I mean, he could have done it in, in any of the fairs because the whole concept is his invention's going to win, scare everyone to give him the throne. That's the whole thing. I don't know why it's specifically this one, but whatever. However, let's go back to Igor, whose scientist is uh, physically abusing his girlfriend. He just kind of throws her. Then he proceeds to die to his own invention. Epic. And right after he dies, the king walks in and he's like, hey, where's Glickenstein? I want him to beat Schadenfreude because I don't like him. Schadenfreude might become king. Uh, did you guys um, did you guys get that part that I don't want him to become king? So I need someone to make a better and oh my God, it repeats so much. But anyway, Igor seizes this opportunity, lies that Glickenstein is still alive and he's going to create life. One of the greatest inventions of all time, which I just want to say isn't isn't like immortality. The greatest invention of all time. Like, I get it. I get it. They're trying to do the whole Frankenstein thing where it's not Frankenstein who made uh, Dr. Frankenstein who made Frankenstein's monster. It, it's it's Igor who made Igor's monster. That's like the whole bit in this movie. But. Why is everyone ignoring that there is a immortal rabbit who literally won't die and can't die? Isn't that 
the best invention ever? Yeah, sure, life is cool, but the rabbit can't die. Like you've already made the best invention. Why don't, why are you making, oh. Oh, so stupid. So we get a little montage of him creating his monster and uh, he makes it indestructible and even uses an evil bone to make it evil. Just to clarify, um, you know the whole running gag of, uh, you know, not a single evil bone in their body. I wonder if that's why. I wonder if, I wonder, I wonder if that's what they were doing. Get it? Evil bone. They actually put in, they took a figurative and made it literal. Okay, moving on. That, I'm sure that's not gonna happen again throughout this movie. Anyway, he put puts together his creation and right when he thought that his experiment failed, he turns and sees her. She let out a big <laughs> and then ran away into the night. They then find her at a blind orphanage, which uh, honestly this part I think is kind of funny just by the ridiculousness of it because the whole point of this entire thing is he wants to be evil. He wants his invention to be evil. But even Igor was like, yeah, sure. Uh, that's great that she's killing orphans, but really? Blind orphans? I feel like it's a little bit over the line, you know? But anyway, he finds out she's not actually killing them. She's just playing with them. Man, it's almost like she doesn't have an evil bone in her body. Wait a second. I understand. It all makes sense now. But while that has happened, Shoddy Dick goes to Glickenstein's place to steal his invention. That's like his thing. Like, he doesn't make the inventions. He steals them. I don't even know if I mentioned that earlier. I, I genuinely don't care. I just don't care anymore. And he sees the destruction and finds Igor's plans and they instantly found out he created life. And this part is just so hilarious because all that's on the paper is just a drawing of like an ogre. It doesn't even look like the invention that he made. It's just a drawing of an ogre, and then they piece together, oh, he's gonna create life. What, how do you piece that together? Also on top of that, he signed, he signed the blueprints with Igor. Throughout the entire movie, all we've heard is the fact that Igors can't invent. It's illegal, they will get massacred if they invent. I have to hide that I invent stuff. Literally writes his name in bold on blueprints of an invention. How stupid, how dumb is this? Oh yeah, and right behind his name is literally just E equals MC squared, and then he drew some like beakers and a light bulb. What, what is this? It's like they just Googled clip art of science things and just threw it on a piece of paper and then drew an ogre. So I think you could start figuring it out by now. A lot of this movie is just common figurative uh, phrases, and then they make that figuratively into a literal sense. That happens throughout the entire movie. For example, Igor and the pull the switch situation, that is the entire premise of the movie. Not an evil bone in your body. We already talked about that. She wouldn't hurt a fly. They literally made an entire scene about the fact that she couldn't kill a fly. So they end up taking her to a brainwash, yes. Another example of taking a phrase too literally because it, it looks like a car wash but it's a brainwash. <laughs> but anyway, they take her to get eviled up and uh, apparently you can brainwash someone to be evil. I guess, I guess that's what it's for. You know, they live in an evil town. So they do that for her, but Brain accidentally changed the channel. She was watching and instead of becoming evil, now she just wants to be an actor because it was like a, a documentary on, uh, on being an actor. Also, her name is now Eva because evil, Eva. Man, this writing's good. But, oh yeah, now they're getting chased by Schadenfreude uh, with the shrink ray to capture his invention, but since, you know, Eva indestructible and all, uh, it reflects back to Schadenfreude and uh, she saves all of them. And I guess none of them uh, pieced together that that was Schadenfreude that was chasing them. So Igor comes up with the idea to convince Eva that this science fair is actually an audition for Annie, except this version of Annie, she's just massacring people. That's actually what, yeah, that's, yeah. And we start to see what this is really about, you know, the concept that Igor really wants to be an evil scientist, but the problem is, is he's actually a good person person, pretty on the nose. Throughout the film, both of his inventions and Eva constantly tell him how he's terrible at being evil and how he's actually a good person, blah, blah, blah. You know where this is going. We have a little montage of her practicing her role with the Bigga Figga song in the background. You know, the Bigga da Figga, the more that I, I like her, the the more that I love her, the, the Bigga da Figga, the, yeah. We then have a little sappy moment where Eva hands all of them gifts and then we get a little hint that Igor is getting a little, you know, Sussy, sussy with Eva, if you know what I mean. 
sex. They're going to have sex. So this is the part of the movie where he starts being conflicted. Am I evil? Am I good? Should I tell her that this is just a, 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 a lie to get her to be evil? Should I tell her? Oh, oh, oh should I tell? Should I tell her? Did I tell no, I'm just, I'm just stupid, this dumb, this dumb. What am I doing? I'm a, I'm a grown adult. I'm a grown adult. You understand that? And then Heidi, who was Glickenstein's girlfriend at the beginning of the movie, randomly shows up and gives Igor a card that teleports him to Schadenfreude. And Heidi proceeds to just bully the fuck out of Eva. Maybe some men like girls who don't look like they've been put together at the junkyard. So she ever makes a big deal with Igor. He tells him, yo. Let me have Eva, I'll win the fair, I'll become King King, and then I'll make you a scientist. Pretty good deal. But Igor obviously tells him how she isn't evil. Then uh, a shoddy poo poo tells him not to worry. He can make any woman do anything he wants. Based? Is that Andrew T Is that a classic Tate W right there? Holy shit, Giga Chad. Base! Now throughout this movie, there's a lot of talk of like beauty and, and stuff like that. I think, you know, I'm trying to do the whole thing. I mean, it doesn't matter what's on the outside, but honestly, but it's on, on the inside. But honestly, sometimes it just doesn't it makes sense like for example Eva asks brain and scamper is she pretty and instead of their response being like yeah it, it oh, what matters what's on the inside or no you're beautiful they were they respond with get the makeup get a, a supermodel space if we have to basically saying yes you're ugly as fuck but maybe we can cover it up also the dynamic between schadenfreude and jacqueline is just weird throughout she's basically his slave in a way and uh, he is just awful to her and then there's some jokes that are just like at women's expense just like laughing oh women lamal like when he calls her a psycho girlfriend friend and she screams I'm not psycho I don't know I don't know some parts just feel weird with that and the next scene is just another example of horrible writing who would have thought instead of just like showing for a second uh Heidi transforming into Jacqueline and then and then we piece together oh I get it so she must be the one who steals all the inventions because she poses as girlfriends they end up going through an entire scene of mm, I'm this uh, a scientist girlfriend now I'm this scientist girlfriend now I'm this scientist girlfriend we get it we get it we get it we, we're writing that spoon feeds the viewer it's annoying I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm, I'm getting I'm getting out of hand all right I'm sorry so now we get to the romantic part yes there's romance because you know, Igor and Eva, you know, rubbing stuff together, rubbing their humps together. But it's that cliche of her walking down the stairs and oops, awkward, quirky moment. She falls on top of him and they're like, <laughs> Uh, I'm so silly. I didn't mean to fall for you. Oh, oh, another example of taking a saying and making it literal. This entire movie is just fucking. We get it. We get it, we, we get it. So instead of just taking the five seconds to be like, yo, Eva, I was lying to you. I was trying to make you evil. Now I like you, let's have sex. Right when he's about to tell her, he gets interrupted by Heidi. And you know, he's just like, oh, one moment, please. And this is the moment that everything hits the fan. And Heidi confesses that she loves Igor and he hears thunder and says the line, when it rains, it pours. Oh, is that another figurative s s speech? Making it literal? Anyway, Heidi, who is Jacqueline in disguise, starts just macking on Igor. I'm talking open mouth, face devouring type shit. And Eva sees this and obviously she's like, oh no. He doesn't actually love me. I'm ugly because, you know, Schadenfreude's in there being like, you're gross. You're ugly. He would never love you. Classic, classic Tate W right there, Shoddy. Oh, yeah. Also, Shoddy uh, left a little anonymous tip that Glickenstein was actually dead. And then he comes in, finds Igor, and then throws him into what I like to call Ohio. So at this point, Igor kind of gives up. He's like, you know, I'm going to just become body parts for people to use because I don't really know what they mean by Igor. Igor recycling. I don't know if they just take body parts and put them on other Igors. It's never really explained. But Scamper and Brain actually go to save Igor and they end up finding a secret passage that leads 
Oh, how convenient to the top of that tower that is shooting lasers into the sky. And obviously, you know, we find out the huge twist is that the beacon is actually the one creating the clouds. But how? I didn't I didn't expect that. Wow. So down at the fair, Shoddy Waddy is literally just bowling the shit out of Eva, shoving her, calling her ugly in order for Eva to hit him. And then she activates her evil bone, which I guess now she does have an evil bone in her body. And yeah, she turns evil. Igor ends up jumping down to the arena to help Eva while she is uh, massacring all the other inventions. And since everyone obviously sees how indestructible and strong Eva is, they kind of just let Shoddy take the throne. He throws the king down to the ground. He's like, look at me. I am the king, bow before me. Igor ends up making it to Eva in time before she destroys the entire arena. And uh, you want to know how he gets her to stop being evil. You want to know? You want to know the line? that really clicks with her. Everyone has an evil bone in their body, but we choose whether or not to use that evil bone. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I, I just want to print that out and hang it up in my wall. Oh yeah, also uh, Brain and Scamper were at the top of the tower and they ended up shutting down the beacon. And whoa, now there's sunlight. And whoa, the king died horrifically because a piece of the tower got pushed off by Scamper and ended up killing the king uh, because everyone found out that the king was actually trolling everyone and he's the one who made the clouds. And then Igor, you know, makes a little speech. See? See, we don't need to be evil. Our evil bones don't need to be used. And evil bone in bodies, there's evil bones in everyone's body, but not me, not, don't, you don't use them. You don't have to. And then we skip a little bit to the future. Obviously, Igor is happy. They ended up turning the battle arena, the Coliseum into a theater and they, they do theater performances now. And um, it ends with, the blind orphans singing, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Okay, that's kind of funny. All right, that right, I'll admit they had to have done that on purpose, right? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Blind or, okay, you know, I'm not, I'm not even gonna complain. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, that's Igor and my sanity is over there somewhere. I can't find it. But if you guys so happen to enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe. Please make sure to like, uh, uh, poke the like, this is the like, poke it, poke the like button. Like I'm poking you. I'm. I'm poking you. Uh, yeah. Caress. I mean, caress. I'm caressing. Caressing. Okay. Bye.